Hello everyone, so I'm gonna be installing SYNC 3 into my 2015 Focus ST. Has SYNC 2 right now, um, mainly upgrading it for Android Auto. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to make a video to get you know my perspective on the install. Um, I know Brian from Navi Upgrade has a great video on um, on how to install it, but uh, it's always nice to have different perspectives. Um, he has a lot of information on what you need, uh, but basically you're gonna need the uh, the A PIM, which is this part. Uh, right here and he has a whole guide on on what you should look for uh, you're gonna need the sync 3 screen uh, this is the 8 inch I believe it's the non recessed uh, version um, so we got the the, the a pin attached to the screen already um, so this came in one unit for me I just got this off eBay for 350 bucks um, so Brian on his website, he gives a whole bunch of like free information um, if you want to do the research and um, source the parts yourself. Um, so you can get the parts from like a junkyard. Um, I got it from eBay. Um, so there's a lot of resources, but if you want to save time, um, I recommend going to uh, Navi Upgrade. Uh, they got he sources all the parts for you and makes sure it all works. Um, which is pretty good. Um, I also got the uh, the CarPlay Hub. Uh, I got the this is this is made for the 2013-14 uh, STs, but I'm gonna see if this works with the 2015 uh, uh, model. Um, I also have this. I think this is the Gen One harness for for the for the hub and. The reason why Brian says to get the for the 2015s to get the single port one is because there's an aux um, USB right here. Now I don't use this USB, so maybe maybe this will work out fine. Um, what else we got here? And then I'm gonna be also be doing the installation. Um, although I don't have a Windows laptop, so I might have to <laughs> go borrow my cousin's. Uh, the last thing you're gonna need is the GPS antenna, and um, I think my APIM is a non-nav version, but this will be for the the GPS clock, and I think um, 911, and I believe it connects right here. So. Let's go ahead and uh, do the installation. Oh, tools you're gonna need. You're gonna need a, a T25 Torx bit. Um, this is T25, a, a T20 and a T8. Um, I got my iFixit kit and that comes with the T8. Now, I don't know if you're gonna need a TR. So the, I believe the TR has the little hole in the bit. Um, or if, if if it's just a regular Torx bit. Um, but I got all the stuff here. You're also going to need some prying tools. I don't know if I mentioned that. I don't know if I'm going to use these. I might not need them. Um, but yeah, let's let's uh, let's start the uh, disassembly. I should probably take this out. This is the the Stinger emergency tool as a seatbelt cutter. It's a little bit rusted. This is a seatbelt cutter, but also has two USB type A ports, one USB type C port. Super handy. And this is this also smashes um glass. So if you ever need to get out of the car, you know, this might this might save your life one day. Or the first step is to get this trim piece off. I watched Brian Brian's video a couple times. So um let me see if I can do this from memory, but if not then <laughs> Uh, I'll just bring up his video. So you're just gonna have to pull this piece off and Looks like there's some tabs here. It does take a little bit of force, but it Shouldn't need like Shouldn't be manhandling it um, For this bit <laughs> As I manhandle it <laughs> Yeah, 
yeah so it looks like there's a clip here so you just, I get you just gotta push that to the to the right and that will that will come off there might be another tab there we go Might be better to come in it from the other side. Ooh, there we go. Oh, so I was holding it in this, I think this part right here. Ooh, there's like another trim piece right here. I'm pretty sure you don't need to take this off. So, okay. Starting normal recording. Nice. Starting normal recording. Why is this? Too interesting. Okay, this reminds me of one of those like swap meat stickers. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's put that there. Here's the T twenty five. All right, cool. Just gonna leave the screw there. Okay, I'm gonna go back on the driver's side. Oh, you know what? I think there's two more T. 25 screws, so I gotta pry this part off. Okay. Oh, this might be a better method. Come out from the top and bend this down. Yeah, this is a better method than prying it from the side. So come from the top. Get a spludger, come from the top, and go up. Was holding that in. I guess this part right here. Okay, now let's see. Take out the passenger airbag wire. Cool. There we go. And according to Brian, he recommends that you tuck this in so that it doesn't get caught. Now we got four more T25 screws right there. Oh, I am getting a phone call. Alright, well, apparently one of my uh, mom's friends is dropping off jackfruit. <laughs> you guys like jackfruit? I think it's good. It smells weird, but it's good. I recommend you shift to fourth so you have more space to work with. Cool. Also, this is one of those double drives screwdrivers so it'll always turn clockwise whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise it's like or vice or other way around so it's like oh that's pretty cool okay i believe next he pulls this out this area oh there it is so i do have the st3 that's why i have this button right here i think um if you have SD2 or 1, those are not there. Oh, okay, cool. That's what it looks like inside. Very nice. Okay. I believe... So really, we got that out so we can pull this up according to uh, Corn Brian. So let's see if we can do that here. This is to use quite a bit of force. Oh, 
There we go. Oh, that kind of hurt. <laughs> My nose bridge. All right. Cool. And I know there's the hazard light clip. Again, it might be easier to go it from the passenger side. Here we go. Oh, okay. That's why it wasn't coming out so easily. There's this little clip right here. You gotta push this, push this towards you if you're sitting in the passenger side. Also, don't forget to connect, to disconnect this part. I think that's for the um, the controls right here. Alrighty. Cool. Nice. Let me, uh, let me go back to the driver's side. Okay, mom's friend just dropped off the jackfruit. Nice. Okay, I'm probably gonna stick this in the back for now. Let's give me more space up in this. There we go. Cool. All right, next looks like there's a whole bunch of T25 screws that we gotta take out. So let's go and do that next. Uh, actually, we don't need to unscrew this. It's just this, this, these two on the bottom, these two on the side. We can keep these for the radio. I believe these are all the same screw. Yeah, it looks like it. Oh, you know what? I should probably take off my otter before I uh, install the sink three. Let's do that. Let's get my keys. Also, thanks guys for the ST shirt. <laughs> I think I got that for Christmas. Yeah, I'm gonna miss the otter, but uh, it's time to get the sink three installed here. Oh jeez, I know that's gotten oh, crap out some people. All right, I'm gonna factory reset this before I take this out. System. I thought this was this was such a cool system when I got it. <laughs> Hmm, interesting. It's for the nav map. There's the Ford splash screen. I want to get that ST splash screen. That looks pretty, pretty cool. <clears throat> Oh, I hope I didn't brick my Sync 2 <laughs> display. I had to turn the car on. Huh, I've never seen the, the Sync splash screen before. Well, while we wait, let's, uh, let's uh, give it some ribs. It's always fun. <laughs> Cool. All right. Okay, next, I think we just slide this out. Okay, so you can push this up or 
the mold. Okay. Let's see what's back here. Disconnect the 54 pin, I believe. That's what it's called. Here's the marker USB. I think it might be easier to get from the other side again. <laughs> I'm starting to think that this install is actually easier to do from the passenger side. So I believe you're gonna have to push this down so that you can swing the gray part towards you. Yeah, there you go. So this little black part, you can push down a little bit right here. I don't know if you can see it. And so you can swing this down and then pull this out. There you go. There's the SYNC 2 APIM. Now you're gonna need a, uh, a T20, I think, is what Brian said to get um, this, this bracket out. So let's go and do that next. There's the SYNC 3. Now Brian has a whole article on the differences um, between the two, but the big difference that I can tell is the the heat sink i assume this is the heat sink the the fins are a lot they're smaller than the sink two ones but they run through the whole a pin through the back whereas these they don't run through the whole thing also the sink three has this connector for the gps antenna I believe the sink two has it built in so that's why there's no extra um part for the antenna maybe this is that t8 brian is talking about yeah, T8. So we're gonna need a T8 to get the uh, the bracket out. All right, there's the sink two. And now let's get on the sink three display. These brackets don't line up on the new guy. It was the last model oh. to, before the uh -huh. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay stuff. <laughs> that's that's why I'm doing this, so I can get that. Hmm, the hole don't line up. The mounting solution might be a little bit different. Yeah, I think I may need to take this whole housing off right here just so I can mount this guy in all right let's see if see if my vamp my dad's vampire tool I got this for him for his birthday Christmas I forgot yes he looks <gasps> ginger ginger A little doggy break <laughs> ginger Okay, let's go. I don't want to guy any holes here, so I'm gonna put this back. <laughs> what I could do is um, glue this on. <laughs> or I could just not even install this part and just put this freaking in. Yeah, maybe I should have gotten a focus one instead of an escape. I can come at this from an angle. Oh man, that is really bad. <laughs> but that is good enough in my book. At a weird angle. <laughs> oh man, this looks really bad. <laughs> this gets pushed in. This is so bad. Guys, don't do this. <laughs> Just. Just buy it from buy it from Brian from Navi Upgrade, and don't don't deal with this. This is uh this sucks. <laughs> wow, that is super jank. Oh man. Okay. Well, let's try it now. Black one and the black. I don't know what the silver one is for. GPS, before we forget. Oh, see these little, I don't know, inserts? 
but they go a particular way. There we go. This guy, probably get in right there. that back there <laughs> oh this cable might be in the way the GPS antenna cable there we go let's see let's Put the uh, the Sony piece back on. Let's get the middle bottom wire in, and let's get the hazard lights in. Right, so this back so I can push this in. Cool. Shoot, I gotta get the passenger. Okay, so make sure you feed this through this hole before you, before you put in the Sony stuff, the Sony part. Okay. Yeah, I got the screw. I I don't know if I picked it up on camera, but I dropped it near um, the, I don't know what they call it, the shifter cable. So luckily I didn't fall in too far, so that is good. Okay, next let's get this piece in. Alright, cool. Let's get the uh, AC back on. It's, oh man, I gotta put this in first. Last piece, get this back on, and should be good to go. And let's just get this back on. Okay, maybe not do that.
Whew. All right, so that is the dash part. It's looking good. Uh, next will be the middle, um, the hub part. This is where we're gonna need that T20. All right, yeah, so this is the first step is to get these to open. Um, you're gonna need some sort of small tool, some flathead to get these up. There we go. There we go. All right, so there we go. T20 now exposed. Okay, so we gotta find some pry tool, lift these tabs up. That's gonna expose the uh, T20. All right, let me see if I can do this. So, push this down, pull this until you hear a pop, until this comes off right here. Nice. The next step is, um, it might be easier to, uh, I don't know, I probably can't see it on the GoPro. But there's a little tab, you can push this, push this in, get it loose. You can push that up and that will pop up this guy. Okay, yeah, you just push this down and you can pull that down. All right, cool. All right, there's the old one. Here's the new one. All right. I can tell this one doesn't have, um, or the new one doesn't have two USB ports. So I don't know which one I should use. Cool. I'm gonna lose my aux cape, my aux jack, but it's fine. <laughs> now this is a Gen 1 hub. I'm gonna see if it works with the um, the 2015 ST. Sometimes you gotta learn the hard way. I gotta, I gotta get the Gen 2 hub because yeah, this is not working just because this is probably like power and data. I believe that's, that's it. That's probably gonna where I'm gonna stop until I get the new hub in. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, about my experience with it and let me know cool thanks all right i got android auto to work if you're on a 2015 focus st or if you do have a 2015 focus st you actually don't need this hub that comes or that needs that needs that the 2013 14 focus sts need if you have the 15 you don't need that single port one um hub either you can actually run the the stock hub if you're only if you only need to use android auto now if you need apple carplay then you're going to need the, the the your appropriate hub so yeah hopefully that helps some people when you run the installation you just need to install uh the sync 3 screen with the sync 3 apim and you're good to go